Hi everybody, uh, you'll have to forgive me if I cough or sound sick. I have, uh, well, it's official. I got um, a phone call from the New York Department of Health to uh, let me know to isolate, which I've already been doing because I at home tested positive twice. Um, so I knew I, I knew I had it. So I've been downstairs a lot and I've been organizing my books and watching people's videos, not commenting on everything. So my apologies, but it's just too many videos to comment on. Um, I'm actually getting bins and like watertight bins and I'm going to kind of organize and put some that I'm not going to read right away, <coughs> right away. And I'm going to put them in the bin. So yeah, you have to forgive me. I, I am sick, but I'm doing the best I can to uh, make it not super ridiculous. So unfortunately I had to light a candle because this light above my head is like incandescent light bulbs or, or like the ones in school. And they, it, it's just a wicked glare, like useless on video. Um, so we're gonna just be doing some like candle lit uh, lighting so the books might not look as beautiful as normal now this video is really just a collection um, video because I'd say <clears throat> I've only read probably like 10 15 percent of the books on my shelf I am a collector before I am a, a reader I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna pretend that I'm something I'm not I, I am a book collector um, and then I just try to read uh, this year I'm gonna shoot to read a hundred books uh, I have a very, 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 very busy schedule, but when I do have free time, I'm reading or I'm looking at my books. Uh, it's just my, my addiction. It's my hobby. Uh, so start starting off, I'm doing this library tour, uh, because I saw Steve Donahue do it. Uh, we have this beautiful, beautiful, uh, collector's edition of the Lord of the Rings. I have read this. That's cool. Well, not this copy. This, this is just strictly for, um, this is for the, this is for the ladies. No, I'm just kidding. Um, this is, you know, like curls for the girls, but this is like you buy this book just to sit, sit like that. And, and honestly, I'm probably not going to read that version. I'll probably read my old beat up paperback version. This is usually my reader copy of uh, The Lord of the Rings. It's even the pages are like colored because I, this was my first copy that I bought um, when I was a small child. Let's see. What is this? Uh, <clears throat> well, it's the bind up version. And it's, yeah, uh, I think it's from like 94 or something. Yeah, this was like a gift for me in the 90s, and uh, I still read that version. So, oh, all right. So, like I said, we're just going to be doing um, kind of my collection of, this is actually sci-fi. It's mostly classic sci-fi. Um, so, yeah, let's let's just get into it here, boys and girls. Uh so we got Doc Savage. I have quite a few Doc Savages. This is, um, let's see, this is uh, number five, and it is Doc Savage, The Meteor Menace. I'm not going to lie, I started that one. I think I stopped reading it. i got to organize these a little better, but then we have Danger Planet. It would be great if it focused a little better. Here, we're going to turn around here. It wouldn't sit the other way. I was hoping that that would be a little bit better of a visual for you guys. Um, so that's Danger Planet. Again, these are all like classic vintage sci-fis. Uh, we have Regan's Planet and uh, yeah, by Robert Silverberg. The Six Fingers of Time and uh, yeah, that is, it's a uh, five Fiction novellas um, from Galaxy Magazine. It's a bind up. These are all really vintage, pretty old school. Um, this one, I hate that this has like a drawing on the back, but um, Beyond Eden. I just love these freaking covers, guys. So, yeah, we got Beyond Eden by David Duncan, author of Dark Domain. I have not read either of those. Um, yeah, most of these, like I said, other than like, there's some Edgar Rice Burroughs, I've read those, we'll get to those later, Dunes, I've read those, Mo not all of them, but most of them, um, now at this point, I still have to review them all in the channel, but then we have, I think this is another collection, The Towers of Utopia, no, uh, a novel by Mark Reynolds, just, just love these old vintage sci-fis, and then we have The Stars Will Judge with this like creature 
Very cool. Um, and that is by Irving A. Green Field. Let's grab some more off the rip here. Oh, yeah, we're getting into some Rice Burrows here. We got A Princess of Mars. I've read this one with a, I believe this is a Boris cover. Um, oh, it's a Ballantine. It's got to be Boris. This looks like a Boris cover to me. Let's see. It's the Ballantine paperback version. And, uh, yeah. First Ballantine edition, 1963. It'd be cool if it told me. It's got to be. It sure looks like a Edgar Rice Burrow or a, a Boris Vallee or um, yeah. I have brain fog, guys. This is a real, it's a real um, COVID symptom still on this Omicron version. Uh, you get this like brain fog per se, and it's uh, definitely not not enjoyable for me. We got Ray Bradbury's The Illustrated Man. Uh, this is an old school version. It's, it was a twenty five cents. <coughs> So, so yeah, it's falling apart, unfortunately, but it's pretty darn cool to me. We got another Doc Savage. I'm, I'm going to, oh, well, that's straight up the Doc Savage section right there. But we, we are into the Doc Savage section. I have a collection of Doc Savage. Uh, we got Quest of the Spider by Doc, um, that's a Doc Savage uh, novel by Kenneth Robeson. Uh, this is, I don't know which number this is. Oh, 68. This is number 68. We're going to finish off the other vintage sci-fi before we go back into that. Because I have a straight up, the next 20 books are probably Doc Savage here. But we got uh, Robert Wells' Candle of the Sun. I think that this is like a dark sci-fi, maybe like a horror sci-fi. And that's by Robert Wells. We got Ac Against Architritis, um by Susan K. Putney. Yeah, again, got this, yeah, I'm hoping that this is, like, kind of, um, you guys can at least see the books. Uh, there's a reason I film on the other side of the room. Uh, the lighting in the basement is just not as good, so I have, um, I got this light right here, and it's, it's, that's why I have it. Oh, it's a flipper! Look at that. Oh, it's an ace double, and I didn't even realize it. So, that's why I have this. <coughs> yeah, um, so Time Thieves is by... Uh, a little-known author, Dean R. Koontz. That's probably why I bought this, because it's a Dean Koontz book. Um, it's an ace double. He used to write pulp sci-fi, I believe, before he kind of hit it in the thriller um, horror fiction side of things. I absolutely loved uh, this cover. This is a Boris Vallejo um, cover. So let's see if it'll... Gosh, why won't you just... Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it won't... It won't uh won't do it but uh it's called king's daughter by jane caskell and uh yeah i just love boris covers i'm not gonna lie i don't know why i'm just a sucker for it and it's by jane caskell so moving on we got an asimov we got fantastic voyage nice cover on this one too i just love i just love sci-fi i love classic sci-fi we have an Isaac Asimov, The Foundation. This is the first book in the Foundation series. I have, I think, two copies of the Foundation series. I think I have the hardcover bind-up. Where the heck is it, is the question. I have it somewhere, but that'll be for another video, another library tour. Oh, yeah. I'm just a sucker. I, call me a guy. I'm a typical dude, but I just love Boris Vallejo's. Uh, look at this dude. Look how jacked he is. And this, I mean, I'm not always looking at the guy. I'm not gonna lie to you, but like, so this is a guide to Barsum. Um, but he just really must have spent a lot of time on the bodies of people. I just think he's hilarious. And this is fully illustrated. So there's little. So this is just like a guide to Barsum. So you got like these little illustrations. I wonder if I get um probably not. Or if I move Betty and I move those, if having the light underneath it. Yeah, that might help. So it's just got like literally I don't think you read this. You just like you can look up things. So like Temple of Assistus. And it'll tell you like a brief description of it, you know? I'll probably never read this. I'm not gonna lie. It's just just 
I got it for the Boris cover. So, yeah, I have a problem. Uh, so, this one's cool. No place on earth. Oh, yeah, I think the covers are popping a little bit better now. Uh, by Louis Charbonneau. I can't pronounce these people's names, but 20, 20, 20, 40 AD, a new reign of terror. That is a little tagline on the back. I haven't read any of these, but someday I will. All right, we got another Boris Vallejo, Edgar Rice Burroughs. I am a barbarian. And the greatest part of these books is look at that spine unbroken after 70 years, 80 years. I mean, what are the chances that you can get a copy like this? You know, I just love it. I just love books. So, yeah, 1967. And look at this book. It's in mint. I mean, I mean, it's old. I mean, it's there. It's been it's been on a shelf. But that's it. You got just the Boris cover. I mean, I just any day. I mean, Boris Boris, I think Boris Vallejo is my favorite cover designer. I just think he's a He's just an interesting dude. I feel like he drew some some crazy stuff. So now we're into the Doc Savage section here. So let's let's get a little organizational going on here. My wife's gonna get home from the store and be like, What the heck are you doing down there? And I'm gonna be like, Look, honey, I had to. I just had to make these videos. It's just so important. So let's let's do this Andre Norton before, because I'm gonna put that all together with the other ones. We've got Stargate by Andre Norton. Uh, Andre Norton, I'm interested in trying her stuff out um, soon, actually, because I feel like there's a lot of stuff out there of hers. So we already talked about <coughs> those two. Um, and and wow, uh, these are all Kenneth Robeson. Um, they are all Doc Savage. So we got Doc Savage, the Whisker of Hercules, and the man who was scared. Scarred, probably. Uh, so there's that. You know, we got a little double up. I think those are cool. Why not? Got another double up. And it's Doc Savage. They died twice. The Screaming Man. And I heard, like, towards the end of the Doc Savage series, it kind of gets, like, a little repetitive. Um, this one, look how mint this cover is. It's so beautiful. Doc Savage and the Flying Goblin. Doc Savage and the Black Spot. Just love these old. Now, if you don't know Doc Savage, he is like kind of a pulp hero of uh, kind of sci fi pulp, <coughs> pulp, kind of like Superman, but of the pulp sci fi section, you know, of, um, and kind of like he was kind of like the bronze man, and he, so he was that was his nickname. So he was kind of Superman before, before Superman, I believe. I don't know how I don't know when Superman was created. Don't don't take my word for it. Um, but just love the reds and the blues. Uh, the Derek Devil, Doc Savage and the Derek Devil, and then uh, Doc Savage Spook Hole. So it looks like, like a spirit hole or something. I don't know. Just love it. Went through a little Doc Savage buying frenzy, but. Someta someday these books won't exist because they're so uh, they're going to become hard to find. So we got Doc Savage in the Phantom City. Um, Doc Savage and the Mag Magi. We got Doc Savage and the Magi. Now Doc Savage has a crew of gentlemen, um, and they all have individual uh, skills. And they bring something to the team, which I think is pretty neat. Um, then we got Doc Savage in the Golden Peril. Now, I can't find the first in the Doc Savage series. I have tried. Um, when they do get sold, they are sold at high, high uh, price points. So, um, I have not been able to get one. Um, someday. I just talked about that one. Um, and then the finale of the Doc Savage is, unless I'm mistaken, is this, the Doc Savage, the Haunted Ocean. Uh, and these all range. I mean, they're all numbered. I think there was like 150 to 200 books that were, were written uh, by him. And then there was probably other people that wrote after that. Um, so, pretty neat. Um, and then I have the whole Dune, Dune series. 
which I think I've talked about on the channel before, but I have Dune by Frank Herbert. I got uh, Dune Messiah. I have The Children of Dune. I think I had these in order. I might have had these in order, so let's not F it up. I got, yeah, uh, The Children of Dune. I got God Emperor of Dune with the OG OG covers. Now, I'll probably, I've been trying to read them. Um, so I started with, uh, you'll, I'll get there, but I started with the one that's not here with us is the Butlerian Jihad because I'm currently reading that. Um, I hit a little, it, it's pretty boring. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, yeah, but that was by Brian Herbert. So then we got this, and Kevin J. Anderson, they write the other ones. We got the Chapter House Dune. So then there's that. <clears throat> and then we have the other ones that are like uh, the continuation after Frank Herbert passed away. Uh, so we got House Corno. We got House Harkonnen. House Harkonnen Dune. And these are written by uh, Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson, like I said. Um, got House Atreides. Now that's like Paul's ancestors or family. Um, we all know. Muhadib. So uh, then we got the Machine Crusade. And then we got uh, the Battle of Corin. And these are pretty cool because they do tell like a backstory. So I do want to read them. But... Um, like I said, the Butlerian Jihad, you do hit, like, uh, I did find myself, actually, you, you end up, like, building kind of a, um, like, oh, well, the Harkonnens weren't always bad type deal, um, because you get that vibe from the, <coughs> from the first book and in the movies, if you guys have seen those, um, so, uh, then we got some John Ringo's, we have Gust Front. I think I'm missing one in here from this series. Um, when the Devil Dances. Um, then we have Live Free or Die. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he is a, um, a libertarian. Uh, he has libertarian um, viewpoints in his in his stories. So I did... Uh, so, yeah, I'm trying to find sci-fi authors that have that because that's my political leanings. Uh, then we got Dune, Frank Herbert. I bought this. Uh, this is going to be my reading copy because the uh, Dune, the old school 70s version that I have, is beat up. So I got this to, to reread the series in. Wow, where, where are we at? We're at 14. We're at like 15 minutes right now. It's getting pretty intense. Hey, guys. All right. Then we got The Colors of Space by... Uh, Marion uh, Zimmer Bradley, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Marion Zimmer Bradley. So there's that. We have the Far Out People. Really psychedelic um, cover. I don't know why this is here, but we have Ian Fleming um, Moonraker. And this is a James Bond thriller. It's a nice little red. I think I got this at a thrift store because I was like, a James Bond book? I mean, and it looked like an original paperback. I mean, you'd get it, right? No, 24th printing. So, yeah, copyright um, 1955. This is, a, I don't know, it's probably a reprint, but it's still pretty, pretty OG um, for, like, my collection. So, just was like, you know what? Let's get it. Why not, you know? Why wouldn't you? get it and save it from the thrift store um then we got sword dancer by jennifer robinson no i think this is a pretty long series but this cover just was captivating i thought maybe that there would be like a badass female uh lead character uh then we have joe clayton uh diam from the stars Pretty neat little cover. I think that's what dragged me in. And then I think the reviews on Goodreads were pretty good. Got a Ray Bradbury. Something Wicked This Way Comes. A classic horror novel. Um, most people suggest to everyone. And then we have The Lost Continent. Edgar Rice Burroughs. The Land of Hidden 
Men by Edgar Rice Burroughs. The Mad King by Edgar Rice Burroughs. And Larry Nevin, Ring World. And then we have CJ, um, I think her name is Sharon, The Dreamstone. Then we have same author, uh, Gate of Ervil. Yeah, the furnace is making some weird noises. I don't know what's going on. Uh, same author, this is an entire series. I think it's the Faded Sun series. We have this one. We have uh, this one. And we have this one. And I think there's an omnibus out of this series, and it has this cover on it. I saw it at uh, um, Barnes & Noble. We got Ursula K. Gwynn. The Left Hand of Darkness. People love this. Isaac Asimov collection. And these are the Hugo Award winners. Stellar Five. Another short story collection. Don't need to really dig into that. Lord of Light by Roger Zelazorini. Zelazorini. And then we got these funky ass ones that I got because I was like, these covers are absurd. So, um, I got this, this duology here, and it is Warrior of Vengeance, uh, Sorcerer's Blood and Trails of Pal Peril, and it's by Ross Anton Co. So there's those. So yeah, so that's been my vintage sci-fi shelf, uh, library tour. Um, so, so yeah, until next time. This has been Working Man Reads, and I'll do, I got, I got, I got, uh, I have Stephen King coming, I have my Book of the Month Club collection, I got Vintage Horror, I have Nonfiction, uh, yeah, we just gotta organize the shelves, and then we're gonna be digging in, boys and girls, and everybody, uh, so, yeah, until next time, it's been Working Man Reads, don't work too hard. <laughs>